degrees. We'll see overnight lows into the upper 50s with plenty of sunshine in 80s for the weekend. From the Cairo 7 Pinpoint Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Claire Anderson. It is 72 degrees in downtown Seattle. I'm Ursula Royteen. Listen on your smart speakers. Amazon, Google Home, and Apple HomePod. Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk. Powered by the Pacific Northwest. The Big Lead is brought to you by 3010 Weight Loss for Life. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is The Big Lead. Coming to you from the Car- Carter Subaru Studio. Welcome. We're also streaming on Facebook Live this half hour. Welcome to the big show. We've got, oh my goodness, once again, what we do for you. It's just mind-blowing. Uh, coming up at 1.30 this afternoon, we're going to share with you, we're going to talk to a farmer in Ritzville, Washington. And when you hear about how this community has come together for this farmer who's battling cancer, it is as uplifting a story as you will ever hear. And then coming up just uh, less than 20 minutes or about 25 minutes from now, I should say, we've played for you some cuts from these two guys who call themselves the party bros. They go to city council meetings and... Like, for example, when they wanted to rename a water treatment center after Britney Spears. What up, council? My name is Chad Kroger. First off, I love your city of Manhattan Beach. You have great bros. Council, what does it mean to be American? I used to think it meant eating fudgesicles and being tan. And in a lot of ways, I still do. But I think it also means fighting for the ones you love, which is why I'm here to fight for my first and greatest love, Britney Spears. She's going through pretty serious ennui right now. But she's helped me through major bummer. She pretty much guided me through puberty. She's so hot. <laughs> so that's Chad and his buddy JT gets up. They wanted to rename the water treatment plant, the toxic water treatment plant, the Britney Spears toxic water treatment plant. Baby, can't you see I'm calling a guy like you should wear a warning. Okay. And then they sang the song for the city council. Anyway, the party bros, Chad and JT, they're going to join me about 25 minutes from now, right after the 12.30 news here on the big show. And also, we're going to give away some Seahawks tickets a little bit later this afternoon. So we have you covered, but with all that is mere prelude, let's get to the big lead. The big lead, top story. Well, it was Ursula's top story in her newscast as well. And this one that I would love to get your comments on this one. And in fact, our intern Logan is going to be monitoring your comments that you text in. And we'll share your thoughts a little bit later this afternoon. But this happened, the audio was just released. This happened at Van Asselt Elementary School here in Seattle in May. But we're just getting the audio today. A young teacher, she's 27 years old, she's white, a, she was in the school when a, an African-American kid came up and threatened her. And she was so frightened by the threat that she called 911. It's a non-emergency. I need to file a police report. Okay, I just need to screen it first. What are you trying to report? Um, I was threatened. Okay. Is the person you threatened there, threatened you there now? Um, he's in my building right now, yes. What's the address there? And what is this location? Is this the African American uh, Academy? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, um, and how long ago did this happen? Is, um, this happened about two hours ago. About the suspect? <laughs> who, who threatened you? Um, his name... Um, yeah. it's, my name is my name is I'm a teacher at Van Assel Elementary. Um, in my classroom, I had a student who is age eleven mm-hmm. say that he didn't care if I was a woman that he was going to beat my beat the out of me. Okay. And he made an advance on me like he was planning to do that. Did he have any weapons or anything? No, he did not have a weapon. Where is he now? He is in our school office at the moment. Okay, I'm going to pause it for a moment. I want you to hear more of this as well. So 
uh, he came up, so he's going to beat the bleeping bleep out of her, advanced on her, and she was so frightened that she did indeed call the police. And so the kid's still in the school. And the question I'm going to ask you is, do you think that this was an appropriate 911 call? Or do you think, I mean, there are a bunch of questions that I have. Appropriate 911 call, or does the teacher just need to be tougher, which is what this group of parents, they call they say they're claiming, their group of parents on Facebook, uh, does she just need to be tougher? Uh, there is another very important question that comes out of all of this that nobody's asking. Of course, of course, I'll be the only one to ask it, but here's more of her 911 call. And you guys are under control with him in the office, is that correct? Um, yes. Okay. Um, what race is he? And you said he's 11, he's 11 years old? Yes. Um, I believe he's, he's either 10 or 11. Okay. 10 to 11. And what race is he and what is he wearing? Black, African-American, mm -hmm. um, dreadlocks, um, about 4 foot 11, uh, gray and white sweatshirt on currently, jeans and black sneakers. Is he high or intoxicated today? Um, I don't believe so, no. And he threatened to beat you up. Did he posture to hit you? Um, not real. I mean, kind of. Like, I mean, he kind of puffed his chest out and moved in towards me, but he didn't, like, hold up a fist or anything. Okay. So you've heard as much context as, as you need there. So there's this group that claim their parents – Called for actually, racial justice in Seattle school. Just one little thing. They, they actually claim that they're school district employees. Oh, employees? Yes. Okay. Uh, for racial justice in Seattle schools is the name of this Facebook page. And uh, they said that this is an example of the school to prison nexic, nexic, nexus. Uh, they said that uh, they're the ones who posted this audio because they said this is about a teacher who wielded her white fragility and racial bias like a weapon with no accountability. And then they said, you won't hear about this in the news because Seattle Public Schools actively works to cover these incidents up. Teachers are afraid to step forward for fear of retribution, and administrators act on behalf of the district to keep it from public view, they wrote. Uh, but they seem to believe, they don't call for this specifically, but they say that the system and the teacher must be held accountable. And so, are teachers, if they are physically threatened, I mean, any of us, if we're physically threatened, if somebody comes up, regardless of their age, if somebody comes up to us and says, I'm going to beat the bleeping bleep out of you, and then you know, advances toward you, that's, that's a threat. Should teachers not be allowed to call 911? Now, what the school district is saying, and the school district is doing all the politically correct things now. They said that uh, they call it, in, they acknowledge that racial bias in discipline is an issue in the schools. There's a statement from the Seattle Public School spokesman. They called this an unfortunate incident. And they said uh, the parents are asking on student leaders or district leaders to have renewed conversations on bias in student discipline. Is this an example of bias? That's another question I'll ask you. Uh, how do we know what's in this teacher's head and heart? What if it'd been a white kid who said, I'm going to beat the bleeping bleep out of you? Would the teacher be frightened enough to call 911? Well, we don't know because we don't have with this teacher any equivalent incident. But I don't think teachers should be exempt from being allowed to call 911. Now, when the police did respond, the teacher chose to not press charges because she was afraid of retaliation from school administration. Although it sounds to me from the earliest statements by the Seattle Public Schools, that this teacher might be in a world of trouble with administration because the schools always, always will cave in to the politically correct side of things. And so 
the question that nobody has asked is, should this kid be disciplined? And what's going on in a kid's life? Now, there are some kids who have good parents and they go bad. I know that. But what's going on in this kid's life if he truly said, I don't care if you're a woman, I'm going to beat the bleep and bleep out of you. Should the kid be held accountable? Should the kid's parents be held accountable for this? Because, honestly, there are not a lot of fifth graders who act like that. And I'd love to know what's going on in this kid's life that makes him think that he can threaten to beat up a teacher, use that kind of language, specifically say, I don't care if you're a woman, I'm going to beat you anyway. Now, maybe that's organic, but maybe that's also learned behavior. I mean, you know as much about this incident and story after listening to that 911 tape as me. But I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear. Uh, should this teacher not have called 911, the school and the school district, they now say that they're going to work on de-escalation techniques with their teachers. Oh, good. More workshops. That's what we need in education. More workshops. So they're going to work on de-escalation techniques so that teachers won't call 911. But this is part of a much bigger social issue, all of this stuff. And our schools, and the Seattle schools, have lots of educational problems. But one reason for the educational problems is, uh, and this isn't just the Seattle schools, in every school district. Sadly, there are a lot of kids who are not there to learn, but they're there to disrupt. And so I'd love to hear your thoughts and from any angle that we've discussed here. You can text us at 98973. That's 98973. Should this teacher not have called 911? Do you think this is an example of racial bias since the teacher's white and the fifth grader's black? Does size matter? It's being a big deal's being made that the kid's about four foot eleven. I don't know how tall and big the teacher is. I have no idea. But some people are claiming that that is a factor. That because the kid's not even five feet tall, the teacher should not have called the cops. So let me know what you think. Text us at nine eight ninety seven three. That's nine eight ninety seven three. Next up in the big lead. The big lead. I sense a Dory rant coming on. And then a story that was just breaking as I was getting off the air yesterday. Two Seattle teenagers have been charged for a violent spree that took place over a two-week period. And it finally came to a head last weekend. Uh, Police say they've connected these two teenagers to four street robberies, three drive-by shootings one of which they pistol-whipped a man and sent him to the hospital. A seven-year-old boy was injured by shrapnel in one of the shootings. The two boys were finally arrested around 3 a.m. Saturday after leading police and troopers on a high-speed chase and crashing on the West Seattle Bridge. Uh, The two boys are 14 and 16 years old. A 14-year-old girl was also a passenger in the stolen vehicle. But the crimes these kids, according to the court documents, are believed to have committed over the couple-week period. The 16-year-old's been charged with a single count of drive-by shooting. The 14-year-old has been charged with a drive-by shooting, attempting to elude a police vehicle, hit and run on an occupied vehicle, Second-degree unlawful possession of a firearm. 14 years old. And all of those crimes. Q13 News. They talked to a social worker about these two children. I'm speechless. Like, I, I... Yeah. How are we sort of allocating our resources in the community? Where are we putting them? Where are we neglecting them? Where are the gaps? How can we better fund our schools? How can we better fund our programs? How can we better fund our social services? I think it takes diligence and it takes this consistent effort. 
What we're doing ain't working. And what she's talking about is what we're doing. Kids know that they are not going to be punished. We've, I mean, Dow Constantine, you know, the guy who uses King County Sheriff's personnel as his personal Uber so he can go out drinking and womanizing. Yeah, that Dow Constantine. Uh, Dow Constantine, he is part of this, no youth should be put in jail. And we've, we've heard from this movement in King County, no youth jail. What if they rape somebody? No youth jail. What if a 14-year-old kills somebody? No youth jail. That's the movement. Children should never be put in jail. So what happens? Well, kids know that they can. I mean, wait till you hear what that 14-year-old in the, this crime spree is doing today. He's at home. At least we hope he's at home. They put uh, an ankle bracelet on him and released him to his house. Who thinks that makes sense? If you grow up in a house where you are then capable at age 14 of committing a drive-by shooting, hit and run on a police vehicle, hit and run on an occupied vehicle, unlawful possession of a gun. So this 14-year-old who grew up in a house where he was able to be uh, get a gun and do drive-by shootings, and, and our solution after they catch him is, yeah, go back home. Of course this is not the right path. But kids know, especially with the no youth jail movement in King County, they know that they can commit the most heinous of crimes and still be walking around. The 16-year-old who also was charged a year ago for a carjacking, on July 10th he was arrested on suspicion of assaulting a store clerk was back out on the streets. Five days later, the 16-year-old and two other men, or males, boys, we don't know, they robbed a man of his cell phone at gunpoint. So with the 16-year-old, you got a carjacking, an assault. These are arrests, not convictions. Carjacking, assault, robbing a man at gunpoint. And we keep putting him back out on the streets. And then he's involved in this wild spree of drive-by shootings and assaults. This is what I've been talking about. As long as we have absolute insane people as King County Executive and on our county and city councils and in our prosecutor's office, and they say it's okay to let somebody rob somebody at gunpoint right back out on the streets, we better not fake that we're shocked when they engage in a two-week crime spree of carjackings and drive-by shootings. I'm telling you right now, leadership, lack of leadership in this region, they are insane. And that is your big lead for today. The Big Lead on Cairo Radio. First one's going to check the news. I'm checking all your text messages here. We'd love to hear you on both stories, 98973. This is the text number, 98973. The Party Bros, they're going to join me coming up next here on the Dory Monson Show.